you're watching TBC Breakfast. Now, many states across Nigeria are experiencing water shortages. The Katsina metropolis has been hit by acute water scarcity, the worst in the last two decades. It's more than three months since the state water board pumped water to the state capital and its environs. It has come to this. Women, children, and elderly wake up early in the morning to struggle for water in all parts of Katsina metropolis. They go in search of where to get water or water vendors to buy from. Water is life and most essential commodity man uses to keep hygiene and purity for worship. Many families are disturbed by the water shortage and can hardly get enough water for daily use, especially during this Ramadan fast period and with prevailing harsh weather conditions. Most of the traditional wells around have dried up and the use of boreholes are limited to well-to-do. Water queues can be seen everywhere and people spend hours before it gets to their turn to collect water. It is a very big problem here. It is unprecedented and we are growing in population. Serious measures must be taken to address this and its reoccurrence. You can see how everybody is involved in looking for water. It is a struggle that we never thought of. We buy water, we buy jerrycans of water on very high price. Animals are killed here on a daily basis and the butchers need water to run their operations. The shortage of water is taking a very heavy toll in maintaining hygiene in the place. The people here fear that if this water shortage continues for much longer, it may lead to an outbreak of waterborne diseases. Provision of potable water is one of the basic needs the government cannot ignore. It must respond quickly before the water scarcity becomes much worse. All right, joining me now is the former managing director, chief executive officer, Lagos State Water Corporation, Olumuyiwa Koka. It's good to have you join us right now. Thank you. Thank you for inviting right. me. Growing up, we used to have tap water everywhere, <laughs> in our kitchens, <laughs> in our you know, bathrooms, and, and yes. shower. Everything just runs that way. In fact, I remember mom and dad those days would say, don't waste water, don't waste water. But all of that just fizzled away. Now it's difficult to see, except for very few places like that, what it really happened. Well, the first thing is that at that time, we didn't have a population of 20 million in Lagos State. Whoa. And um, the infrastructure then was able to cope with the population we had. Right now, I don't think there's a big gap between what, you know, what is on ground. So basically, it's about poor planning, not, not planning alongside. As the population was increasing, you also add up to... I don't think it's poor planning. I think it's just um, not because, I mean, we have lots of studies, lots of plans and all that is implementation. And okay. that's quite different from, you know, poor planning. All right. It, it, we, just, we just played a report, uh, uh, you know, reflecting the, the scarcity, the situation in Katsina State. It's not just Katsina State. You, you have mentioned Lagos, not just Lagos. There are so, in fact, most of the states have this challenge. Yes. What is really difficult in making portable or pipe bond water available? Uh, well, you see, the first thing you must appreciate is that um, provision of water is a very, very expensive business. Hmm. Okay? And... Um, I, I, at least from my own experience, I'm not sure any state on its own can fully su sustain a water supply system. Why is that? Because it's, a, it's expensive. For example, you know, it's, in terms of industries, it's the third most energy hungry industry because of the kind of, you know, converting to processing the water and all that. You just cannot, you just cannot cope. But how, how, how are countries like South Africa and all of that, how are they coping that Nigeria cannot cope? Because it's not basically government-based, you know, and they have various forms of private sector involvement, you know, some a bit, some are fully privatized, like in the UK, etc. But rarely do you see any system now that is fully or 100% government. All right, but I I in that case, if you're making us understand that it's mm. quite really expensive and the government cannot run it alone, so we need to bring in a private sector. Yes. You, you, are, you have been in the know of some of these things. Yes. And, and government is, up until now, government is not thinking of bringing uh, a, a private sector. I is there anything the government is not uh, doing right in that regard? Um, I think it's, it's more the political will. Okay. It's not... Um, 
it's, it's not a new idea and it's not a new concept. It's essentially having the political will to, to go that path. And uh, not everybody, I think, is prepared. We're still in the, in the region or have any of politicians saying they want to give free water. But mm. really, we can't afford free water. But what, what, are, what are you seeing as a human right, isn't it? Yes. I mean, we're not saying that it shouldn't be given as a human right. For example, in South Africa, you cannot disconnect water. You, you can only reduce the amount given if they owe. Mm. Okay? But somebody, it has to be paid for. That's the thing. If, if water has to be provided for Lagosians, for yes. can you give us an estimate of how much it's going to cost, really, to make water, pipe on water, available to parts of Lagos, not just uh, Victoria Island or Lekki or Ikeja, We're talking about the Kurudu, Badagri and all of those. Yeah, well, you see, you must also look at history. Mm. Um, when water, the water system was started or built in Lagos, mm. it was built by the colonialists and it wasn't built for everybody. It was built for themselves. So that's why you find that the main pipeline comes from Iju all the way to Ikoi. There's a reason why it's like that. Mm. We have to now change that because the, the basic um, population growth is right actually east and west of the state. That is Lekki, Padagri, Ikorodu, Ekwe, things like that. So we have to now change the distribution system that way. And it's almost 60 years after independence now. So it means government is still not ready to do that. Yeah? Well, it costs a million dollars a kilometer for <laughs> a primary <laughs> trunk means. It's not cheap. Wow. All right. Thank you very much, Olumu Iwakoka, Thank from our Managing me. Director, uh, Lagos Water Corporation. Thank you. Thank you. You're watching TVC Breakfast. Now, many states across Nigeria are experiencing water shortages. The Katsina metropolis has been hit by acute water scarcity, the worst in the last two decades. It's more than three months since the state water board pumped water to the state capital and its environment. It has come to this. Women, children and elderly wake up early in the morning to struggle for water in all part of Katsina metropolis. They go in search of where to get water or water vendors to buy from. Water is life and most essential commodity man uses to keep hygiene and purity for worship. Many families are disturbed by the water shortage and can hardly get enough water for daily use, especially during this Ramadan fast period and with prevailing harsh weather conditions. Most of the traditional wells around have dried up and the use of bowls are limited to well to do. Water queues can be seen everywhere and people spend hours before it gets to their turn to collect water. It is a very big problem here. It is unprecedented and we are growing in population. Serious measures must be taken to address this and its reoccurrence. You can see how everybody is involved in looking for water. It is a struggle that we never thought of. We buy water, we buy jerrycans of water on very high price. Animals are killed here on a daily basis, and the butchers need water to run their operations. The shortage of water is taking a very heavy toll in maintaining hygiene in the place. The people here fear that if this water shortage continues for much longer, it may lead to an outbreak of waterborne diseases. Provision of potable water is one of the basic needs government cannot ignore. It must respond quickly before the water scarcity becomes much worse. Well, joining me now is former MD CEO, Lagos State Water Corporation, Olumi Wakuka. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Now, water is said to be a human right. But then when you have issues of scarcity, that's sort of an infringement on the right of humans, <laughs> don't you think? Now, what is at the root of this infringement? Uh, well, it, I guess the way to look at it is you need infrastructure to get the water because it's not just the water around you is not in the, in the form you can drink or use. So it is in the processing that we get scarcity. When you say infrastructure, how do you mean? Because over the years we've had infrastructure, there was provision of water until a certain point there was a drop in, you know, the water distribution to various houses. Mm, well, Lots of reasons. One, population growth. Two, power, because, I mean, water is the third energy-hungry industry. So without power, you cannot pump continuously. And then, of course, infrastructure in terms of inputs. 
So how do we achieve the Millennium Development Goal of uh, access to potable water? Is that, uh, <laughs> is that something that will be difficult to achieve? Well, not really. It's just to have the political will to focus on it. And um, as you see, even in the campaigning, it's not really an issue that's been brought to, to the fore. So it's, a lot has to do with the po political will. And once that is there, of course... You when you say political will, you need to break that down. <laughs> a commitment to ensure that water supply is one of the top priorities. All right, so the commitment that we are seeing from government is not enough. It's not commensurate with the population that it has. It's is not that commensurate what it is? with the demand. Mm. That's, that's a primary uh, reason. So where do we begin to push to ensure that this is commensurate with what uh, Well, with we the population? push in all directions. We as the consumers, we should push. The government itself should make it a priority. And if a, you know, a way of doing it doesn't work, you need to find other ways that will make it work. How much impact does this have on the socio-economic development and environmental protection? Water? Yeah. Ah. Water is life. It's in everything. I mean, if we, I mean the, the clip you just ran shows that, you know, there always, and it's quite true, if you don't address the water situation, the follow-on epidemics and things are going to come. It's a certainty. Now, for, for Lagos State now, you were, were there at some yes. point. What is the major challenge? Uh, the major challenge in Lagos is, well, the, the topography of Lagos and the demand. Mm. Yeah. You know, because um, the way you supply water in, say, Lekki, Ekwe, it's not the same way you supply in uh, Agege or Alimosho area. But we understand this over time. So is it the same political will that is not allowing us to address this issue head on? Uh, well, with population in Lagos, it's a moving target. I would say that because um, the, when I was there, the population was, I think, about 17 million. Now it's about 20-something million. So it's a moving target, and it's difficult to keep up the, uh, at peace with. Because this population will continue to grow. Yes, definitely. Does it's, that mean it's, the, it's, it's targeted to grow, I think, to up to 25 million. Mm. Yes. So how do we, something has to be done. That's, yeah, what, that's what I'm saying. So we need the political will to get ahead of the growth. If we don't get ahead of it, we will never catch up. Mm. We will never catch up if we do not get ahead of the growth. And uh, how about uh, private participation in this aspect? Will that help us get ahead of the growth? Well, I've always been an advocate of that. I mean, um, there's no way the state on its own can, can sustain or supply the water supply. It's too expensive. And you need to get help from the private sector, just like in, any, in all the other areas we've talked about. Olumuiwa Kuka, thank you for your time on TVC Breakfast. Thank you for having me.